Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the drug treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so in this video we're going to continue discussing the use of immunosuppressant drugs uh, to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so let's just have a little reminder of uh, the basis of using immunosuppressant drugs to treat rheumatoid arthritis. So remember, rheumatoid arthritis is this chronic condition where you have uh, inflammation of the synovial joints, okay, Specific, specifically the synovial membrane of the synovial joints, and it's usually the synovial joints of the distal extremities, such as the hands and the feet. Okay, now what causes this chronic inflammation? Well, the reason that you maintain this chronic inflammation is that you are launching adaptive immune responses against uh, autoantigens, proteins which are in the synovial membrane basically, which you have lost uh, immune tolerance for. So you should not initiate these adaptive immune responses against these autoantigens. And what these autoantigens uh, seem to share in common is that they're going to be citrullinated proteins. Although, as I say, we don't know what these an autoantigens are, basically. We don't know which proteins are targeted in rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, uh, so what happens is you uh, launch these adaptive immune responses against these autoantigens, and you produce antibody against these autoantigens, known as autoantibodies. Okay, and these autoantigens antibodies go into the synovial membrane, bind to their uh, autoantigen and form an immune complex, and this immune complex then results in more inflammation. So it's this continual production of more immune complexes within the synovial membrane that maintains the chronic inflammation, basically. So, um, the biology of having a chronic uh, adaptive immune response like um, you have in rheumatoid arthritis is not very well understood, okay? Because usually what happens is a pathogen invades, you launch an adaptive immune response against it, and then you destroy the pathogen, it's wiped out basically, and then the adaptive immune response quietens down. Okay, but in rheumatoid arthritis, this adaptive immune response is going to go on and on and on and on for potentially years, basically. Okay, now it's not understood what very well what happens, okay, as to whether um, a single adaptive immune response that you've initiated will continue going on for this time, this chronic period, or whether what will happen is you'll launch an adaptive immune response, that one will quieten down, and then you'll launch another one, and then that one will quieten down, and you're continually launching new ones, basically. And whether uh, which of those two it is isn't very well understood. However, the immunosuppressant drugs that we've seen work uh, by blocking the activation of T-cells, so it seems likely that what has to happen in order to maintain this chronic adaptive immune response is you have to get continual reactivation of the adaptive immune response, basically. Whether it's naive uh, type T-cells or whether it's memory T-cells, um, you have to get activation of T-cells to, to continue the activation of the B-cells so that you get uh, the continued production of antibodies against uh, these autoantigens. And of course, the synovial membranes continue to produce the autoantigens, so if you're continually producing the antibodies um, because you're continually reactivating the adaptive immune response and you're continually reproducing the antigens, then you will continue to get immune complexes uh, being formed uh, in the synovial membrane and this will continue uh, the inflammatory process. Okay, right. Uh, so that's the basis of using these immunosuppressants, that what will happen is they will block T-cell activation and they'll block this continual reactivation of the adaptive immune response, and therefore you'll uh, stop producing these autoantibodies uh, to uh, the autoantigens, okay? So gradually the levels of the autoantibodies within the blood will fall off, and then uh, eventually you'll no longer be producing more immune complexes within the synovial membrane, so eventually what can happen is you'll stop producing the inflammation within the synovial membranes. So that's the basis of using these immunosuppressants uh, to uh, treat rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so uh, we're now going to see another example of one of these immunosuppressants. Okay, and it's again it's a monoclonal antibody. Okay, and this monoclonal antibody is by the name of 
to Clizu Map. Okay, now what does to Clizu Map do? Okay, well it's basically one step down from uh, rapamycin. So we've just discussed rapamycin, also called sirolimus, which is this drug which prevents signal free from occurring within the uh, T cell. Okay, and if we take, for example, a CD4 positive naive T cell, what happens after signal free is that it then differentiates into a T helper naught cell, and then that T helper naught cell proliferates into a population of T helper naught cells. However, after you've got a population of T helper naught cells, what has to then happen is they uh, differentiate into T helper 17 cells. Remember, we saw that the major uh, T cell type. Uh, that is involved in uh, rheumatoid arthritis was the T helper 17 cell, okay? So our population of T helper naught cells here um, started differentiating into T helper 17 cells. And this differentiation process, again, is not very well understood. But two important cytokines that drive the differentiation of T helper naught cells into T helper 17 cells are interleukin-6 and transforming growth factor beta. Okay, so this drug toclizumab is going to be a monoclonal antibody against human interleukin-6. Okay, so it will bind to interleukin-6, mop up the interleukin-6, and then um, basically the idea is that you can stop the T helper naught cells from differentiating into T helper 17 cells. Okay, so here is our... Uh, monoclonal antibody to clizumab, okay, and it will bind to interleukin-6 here, and hopefully then stop the differentiation of um, T helper 17, sorry, T helper naught cells into T helper 17 cells, and thereby block uh, the uh, production of T helper 17 cells, which remember we saw were particularly important uh, for uh, promoting the degradation of the bones because they produced uh, a range of pro inflammatory cytokines which drive uh, the production of other molecules, namely the macrophage uh, colony stimulating factor and the receptor activator of nuclear factor kappa B ligand, uh, which then act on the receptors on the surface of monocytes and trigger the differentiation of monocytes into osteoclasts.